Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'd like to introduce Dr. Monica Lowe. She's here today to talk about building her LAO practice with Amulet. She comes to us from Arkansas Heart. Dr. Lowe. Having me. So I'm going to share my experience or our experience um, with building a left atrial pinch occlusion program with Amulet um, at the Heart Hospital, Arkansas Heart Hospital. So as we know from our busy practices that there's a growing prevalence of atrial fibrillation. Um, it's either with the aging population or now with wearables, um, we're able to detect and diagnose atrial fibrillation more. Um, and there are approximately three to five million patients in the US have atrial fibrillation and this is just gonna grow, keep growing. So stroke prevention in atrial fibrillation is key. Strokes are devastating. And in terms of strokes and atrial fibrillation, since it's in, embolic in nature, it involves more regions and it can be more complicated. So more than 90% of strokes from atrial fibrillation come from the thrombus in the left atrial appendage. So one therapeutic option, of course, is oral anticoagulation. However, that has its own challenges. In terms of warfarin, there's a narrow therapeutic window. Um, if the INR is too um, low, then it's as if they're not taking anything at all. And if it's too thin, of course, there's a high bleeding risk. There are drug, food interactions, and it complicates surgical procedures. So then, um, then that came, DOAX came about, right? But the highest um, risk of when patients are diagnosed with atrial fibrillation on DOAC, it's actually inadequate dosing. So because of kind of trying to prevent the bleeding risk, practitioners, um, physicians feel like, hey, that's just cut the dose. But that provides actually a false sense of security because if you're under dose, there's actually a higher, I mean, there's still a stroke risk. So um, compliance rate also is an issue because of a lot of times costs. So left atrial appendage occlusion can be an alternative to stroke prevention um, for patients that are not able to take anticoagulation long-term in non-valvular atrial fibrillation. So Prevail and Protect AF um, have shown that left atrial appendage occlusion is as effective as warfarin in preventing strokes. And the ongoing catalyst trial is looking at left atrial appendage occlusion um, to TOAX. And we all know that the left atrial appendage occlusion is a rapidly growing market. So um, as you can see in US, there's a um, high, higher um, market share because of um, reimbursement issues and this number will just continue to grow. And with the heart hospital, there's an example. Um, we actually started our left atrial appendage occlusion a little bit later. So in 2016, we started doing Watchmen and but then um, we switched actually to um, Amulet June of 2022. And you can see that we've already done many more left atrial appendage occlusion um, within this um, less than a, within a year. And it's a lot of times because the patients are coming to us actually asking for this device. Even though um, Amulet was approved, FDA approved later than Watchman, it's not a new device. In fact, it's the number one closure in Europe since 2013. So there's been um, experience, of course, with Amulet. And we all know, so why, why did we make the switch? Most of the time, um, single seal device is, is okay, it'll work but um, there are just certain anatomies that no matter how good a single seal device is, it cannot close up the appendage. So if it's um, the, the osseum is really wide and then the appendage is really shallow, it just won't fit. Or if there are multiple lobes, sometimes you can um, close one lobe and miss the other lobe. Or if it's canted, um, then you're not really sealing the entire appendage. So in fact, um, when we used to look at the left atrial appendage and TEE just in the 90 degrees, okay, clear, we're done. But now, as we're doing the left atrial appendage um, closures, we know that the left atrial appendage anatomy is a lot more complex 
and only 20% of the appendages have um, just a single lobe, the wind sock. Um, we were involved in the amulet ID trial, so it showed basically looking at amulet and watchman, and it showed that both amulet and watchman are safe and effective in left atrial appendage occlusion, but closure, um, there's a higher rate of closure um, for amulet as compared to watchman. And one of those things is um, looking at paradevice uh, leaks, so BDLs. And uh, severe leaks are defined as uh, greater than five millimeters, right? So it can lead to thrombosis and strokes. And this is devastating because strokes is what we're trying, or what we're trying to prevent. So we don't want to give um, that. That would be kind of counterproductive um, to have leaks leading to thrombosis and strokes. And as you can see, there's um, higher incidence with watchmen. Mechanistically, if they're um, implanted off axis, then you can have a leak causing um, thrombosis, or you can miss a lobe, right? And with a single lobe device, you can miss a, another lobe. So severe PDO mechanism, um, you can see that again, there's a higher incidence. So amulet has had superior closure. Even in... Um, moderate leaks, so between um, zero to three millimeters, um, so, excuse me, three to five millimeters, you see that at um, 45 days, watchmen compared to amulet, there's a lower risk um, in the amulet population, as well as at one month after the um, left appendage or the device remodels, there's uh, still a lower risk of moderate leaks with amulet. And then, um, in a sub-study, sub-analysis, larger left atrial appendage sizes actually predict severe um, leaks in watchmen. And that is because um, there are just, again, limitations in terms of the sizing. And um, amulet, there's a lot more sizing from smaller to bigger, and also because of the dual seal technology. So if you can see in the double lobe um, example where um, the lobe fits in one lobe, but then the disc can cover the other, um, the second lobe. So um, it's able to uh, provide a better seal. And then to, to know if the device is in the right place, a closed right carrier is used. So to plan for, when you start building a program, um, pre-imaging may be important, right? Either, either with TEE or with CT, so that you can plan for the size, you can kind of anticipate um, what you may need or what kind of um, transeptal stick you need um, in different views. So similar um, to the other left atrial appendage occlusion at 0, 45, 90, 135 angles. And personally, the 135 view most of the time is what you really need to look at. It's very important to have a precise transeptal puncture so that you can implant the device um, um, very in a coaxial way. So you can either use an RF needle. Um, so for AFib ablations, you really just need to go posterior puncture over, and that's fine. But for the left atrial appendage, you want to make sure that you're pointing coaxial into the um, left atrial appendage. So typically what I do is I look at, so I come down in the LAO view and I get a mid-inferior um, area looking at, at the bicaval view. And then you can either clock or counter um, with the needle sort of on the septum to try to get more anterior or more posterior. And you can um, use biplane if you have biplane or x-plane on TEE so that sometimes you can get both views. So one important thing to know is that from the tip to the proximal curves is about 4.5 centimeters. So you want to be able to advance the sheath into the left atrial appendage and not have that curve fight against you in the um, septum because then, then it will be difficult to implant the device. And um, from the, um, from the transeptal puncture, we know that the left atrial appendage is an anterior structure. And 
However, interior is not always 100% the good location, but these are some indicators where you need to go more anterior with your transseptal stick. So if your distance from the interatrial septum to the ostium of the left atrial appendage is greater than 5.5 centimeters, that means that you are able to kind of get the sheath more across and that curve gives you an anterior curve into the appendage. Um, if the left atrial appendage has a more vertical takeoff instead of horizontal, that means that the left atrial appendage is pointing more anteriorly, and of course you want a more anterior curve. And if you have a prominent pulmonary um, PV ridge um, between the left atrial appendage and the pulmonary vein, then you do want to get a more anterior curve so that um, you're not hitting against that ridge. So if you have more than you know, two, more than one of these um, in their patient anatomy, then you want to consider a more interior stick. So this is a case um, of, so one thing I want to say is that, um, so okay, if, if the amulet can close um, um, more difficult anatomies, so then maybe then I do all watchmans and then we, save the harder anatomy for amulet since it can close more. But I think that's the wrong kind of approach to think about it because, again, you want to get used to a device. So you want to be able to um, do the easy anatomies proficiently so that you're not thinking, okay, amulet is a really harder device to use, right? So um, this just happens to be a more difficult case. I don't think we would have been able to close um, without amulet. So 73-year-old woman with Preexistential atrial fibrillation, CAD, hypertension, jazz vast score of four. She's on Xarelto with bruising, and she wants to take NSAIDs for arthritis. She asks about left atrial appendage occlusion. So at the initial view, it's like, okay, there's just one single lobe. However, um, you can see that there's a lot of trabeculation at the 135 view, and it's shallow, and the os is small. And to add to the fun, um, if you can appreciate that interatrial septum, it's like a jump rope, right? So to get to the exact spot that we want to get um, to cross over would be difficult. On the floor of you, you see there's it's shallow with a lot of trabeculation. So I um, actually took wherever the needle could go, which ended up being more superior mid in the transeptal puncture, and then initially sweeping over, it looks like, okay, it may be somewhat coaxial into the left atrial appendage. However, um, if you can see the right side hand screen with a 135 view, you see that my sheath is hitting against that PV ridge and trying to push it, as well as all the trabeculations trying to push it out. So, the deployment is not good. Um, you can see that the lobe is not two thirds past the left cirque. So we tried different sizes. I went into different try smaller lobes um, to try to see if it'll sit. But ultimately, it was decided that I need to repuncture, even though you saw that jump rope of that interatrial septum. And this, right, kind of. In, uh, <laughs> takes pause. So when you say anterior, right, it's anterior to your comfort level. So you see the left panel, the needle is actually kind of pointing towards the, the aorta. Um, but when I push the sheath over, I clocked so that the sheath is not pointing towards the aorta. And actually, it's um, a lot more coaxial when you pan over into the left ventral appendage. But this is... Um, very anterior, but I think it was the only way to be able to deploy so that my sheath is not um, hitting against the ridge. And really, um, without the without amulet, I don't think that there was another device that would kind of s sit in that lobe and cover the os. And um, let me go back. So you see on the right. The 135 view um, is the device 
has it popped out. And I'll talk about the figure of eight sign. But actually, you saw in the 4D view that it was a good closure. So 4D echo can really help us. And then on the fluoro, you see good separation, good compression. Um, there's no leaks into the left digital appendage. So we release it there. So the figure of eight sign is actually an artifact. So we can see it on TEE or on echo post um, deployment. Um, we always get an echo before the patients leave. And initially, when you see that, um, people that read the echo or the echo text say, oh, your earring lids popped out. But it's actually because of the artifact that's created from the night no weave and it's been reported. So um, in summary, so some of the tips that before we switch so, um, to, to build a program um, to kind of pre-plan for the procedure, knowing the sizing, pre-imaging, can help you cut down on the procedure time, knowing what size to use. Um, there are software programs that tell you um, if your stick needs to be more anterior, uh, mid, um, and get comfortable, again, with using the device. Um, there are different ways to deploy um, an amulet. Avoid your PFO for sure, and check the left digital, pin, uh, check the left digital pressure and make sure that it's adequate so that you're not undersizing. Sometimes you may need to use a long sheet to straighten out the iliac system so that the, it makes the transeptal puncture easier because again, the transeptal puncture where you cross over is important. Um, you don't always have to implant very deep into the left atrial appendage um, because you wanna allow the disc to sit on the orifice. And um, I talked about groin closure, but um, pre-closing the groin can really help minimize bed rest time and it can help with patient comfort. Also from the trial, we saw that um, if you switch, so with Amulet, you can immediately stop their DOAC, their anticoagulation, and switch to DAP, and that can lower your uh, effusion, pericardial effusion risk. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lowe. Uh, I'd love to give everyone an opportunity to ask some questions. Um, what is your long-term follow-up plan and strategy with these ambulant patients that you're doing? So, um, so this, so we're gonna be doing a follow-up study, but um, but basically what I do is we do a 45-day TE. But of course, from other studies and other experience, we see that in the theorization really doesn't, it's kind of, kind of like a stint, right? Three, six months. Um, so, but we still do a 45-day TE to look at the seal. And I do DAP for three, six months. And I think there, there are some variability in practices, but Catalyst will tell us more. Any other questions? Yeah. Hello. Um, considering the fact that you guys have adequate volume in both Watchmen and Amulet, what is your criteria for choosing what device for a specific appendage? So, um, again, we've actually switched over to 100% Amulet. And it is, again, getting used to one device. So the problem is when you have different things and then you when when you start you hear people say oh yeah I mean, it's harder to to use but maybe because you're saving the harder anatomies for you know amulets and because there are different ways to deploy it but but you know, we use amulet for all the closures any other any other questions okay well thank you so much dr Lowe. thanks